Regular viewers know my wife, Andrea. She's the boss of the family vehicles and also luxury vehicles. So we have the Mazda CX-9 uh, back again. When I first drove it about a year and a half ago, I said, look out Honda Pilot and look out Toyota Highlander because this car has a lot to offer. Do you agree? I agree. It's very unique looking in its styling with its sharp edges, long hood. I think it's really going to stand out amongst the competition in this segment. I think the exterior styling looks more expensive than what you're really paying paying for in this vehicle. It starts at over $36,000, which I feel is pretty good value. Now that's the front wheel drive base model. Uh, regardless of which trim you get, if you get the base model all the way up to the GT, uh, you do get LED headlamps as standard equipment. Wheel sizes range from 18. This one has 20 inch wheels. And one thing I noticed, now you don't get it on the base model, the power tailgate. You get it one up from the base but I forgot how low it is and I cracked my head again. Oh, that's too bad. For me, my height, it was fine. I didn't run into any problems, but like you said, if you are taller, something to think about. Okay, so we do have the GT here. There is one above that that gives you more interior refinement. So we'll get inside, we'll talk about the functionality and I think a bit of a wow factor, right? Yeah, for sure. Now, Andrea, I've been on record as saying that I think Mazda has class above interiors, meaning this looks more like a premium brand than it does a mainline car brand. Totally on par with luxury brands. In fact, it reminds me a lot of the Audi. We drive an Audi. So the first thing I noticed when I got into the CX-9 is the dial on the center console mm -hmm. that controls the infotainment center. Now, it starts with a 7-inch screen and then anything but the base gets the larger 8-inch screen. Mm. However, you don't get Android Auto or Apple CarPlay yet. And I'm not sure that it's what's called reverse engineerable, meaning you won't be able to upgrade it later. Yes. Uh, Mazda is committed to introducing those features, but it's not, as of now, available on this car. Okay. Well, I find that the trim level is luxurious, the comfort level the same. Um, it's a real special seven-seater that is going to stand out. The second and third row, we used uh, a ton. I took kids to basketball. We had a full vehicle. And uh, what I found is that the kids had no trouble getting in and out of the third seat. They found the second row seat very comfortable. We just moved it up a bit to, as you said before, share the leg yeah, room. Yeah, you need to share. But, and that's common in this class of vehicle. But yes. what about the cargo with all the seats up? So six boys coming from school, six backpacks, a few basketballs, we were really stretched with the cargo space, not enough, and um, we kind of piled backpacks on top, but it didn't work out as well as we thought. All right, now that's common though in this class of vehicles. It is. Now, because of this sort of sleeker, sexier shape, and it's not square like an Atlas, for example, or a Highlander, you do compromise a bit of space in the third row for headroom and for cargo space, but you really have to, that's why you need to try one of these vehicles to see if it's right for your family. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the GT. Now, this looks fantastic, and I agree with you. If you took the Mazda logo off the steering wheel and stuck the Audi rings on there, and you put somebody in here as real vehicle, the Virgin don't know anything about them. Yeah. They go, this looks like, sure, this is an Audi. They would have no problem with that. But there is one level above this called Signature. You get the open pour wood. You get that rich Napa sort of chestnut color seats. It yes. really, I've driven it. It really does look smart. Yes. So you can get a real luxury feel, I think. Now, a couple of negatives. This is it for sunroof. Okay. Yeah, not a lot. You don't get a panel roof. I think if you have a seven-seater, it would be nice to have a larger sunroof. You get heated seats in the front. You get a heated steering wheel available and heated rear seats as well. So that's what it looks like on the inside. Let's take it for a drive. Sure. Okay, we're just about to pull out into traffic. Hit it. Hit it. All right. Now, I never told you what's under the hood of this all week long. Do you know what's at work under the hood? I do know what's at work under the hood. In fact, the Mazda used to have a V6 in the CX-9. Now it's a 2.5 liter turbo four-cylinder engine. And you know what? Super fun to drive, okay, very just sporty. Just stop for a second. I'm, I'm impressed. Are you? You did your homework. I did. I did it. I, I, and the reason I didn't tell you what was under the hood, because I didn't want to, you to, but to prejudice your opinion because it's a four-cylinder in a three-row SUV. Most people think, oh, it's got to have a six. Well, I got to tell you why I looked it up, because I was driving it, and I was really impressed with how sporty it was mm -hmm. and how it handled. So I thought, is this a V6? So I looked it up, and I couldn't believe it. Now, here's the thing. 227 horsepower of a turbo two-and-a-half liter, as you mentioned, 
Now, if you put premium gas, that's on regular gas. If mm-hmm. you put premium gas in, it goes up to 250. And some would say, well, why would you do that? For example, say you had a pretty full vehicle mm-hmm. and you were driving on a highway trip, maybe through the mountains or up some hills, and you wanted to get some extra performance out of it. Well, you have that option if you want to put a tank of premium gas in. Of course. All right. So uh, I got to say another highlight of Mazda products is the way they drive. They don't drive like pokey, boring, they're fun, right? Yes, I did a, mostly city driving as usual. It takes corners wonderfully. You know, a, a lot of these seven seaters have um, a large turn ratio. This didn't, this felt like a car. And there were many times I had to pinch myself and say, am I really driving a seven seater here? Mm-hmm. So for Mazda to capture this sort of drive in a large vehicle, it's impressive. So let's get into the price. You did mention it's 36.4 for the base model, yes. 42 for the uh, the GLS. That gives you um, the power tailgate we mentioned in the back. Yes. And if you get the GT, this one here is 47. And the top one that I mentioned um, with uh, the Napa leather and the open pore wood and everything, that's 50 grand. Mm-hmm. So it's right in the ballpark with everybody else. They, they market these things within a, even a couple hundred bucks of each other. Smart. So it all comes down to what do you want? And if you want to have some fun. Yeah, if you want to have some fun and you want to have the space and you don't want to interior. compromise that, then this is the way to go. Final thoughts on the CX-9. I think that the modern styling, the beautiful finishing, the comfort level, the space, um, I think this is one to beat in this category and I think that you should give it a try if you're looking for a seven seater that drives really sporty and you have a fun time with it take it for a test drive you won't be disappointed nice one (laughs) excited you knew all the facts and figures nice one I know I'm knowing something about cars here